Hi, I'm Quantictiv, and today we will investigate the most important time and space complexity types. Time and space complexities are a measure of functions, processing power, and memory requirements. Many time space complexity types have special names that you can use while communicating with others. While some of the names for complexity types are well known, like the linear and constant time, some others are living in the shadows, like quadratic and factorial time. Let's check out the important ones one by one. In this video, I will use the big O notation to denote the complexities, which is specifically used to describe the worst case performance of algorithms. Constant time space complexity, O1. Simplest of all complexities. Not complex at all. If an operation always completes in the same amount of CPU time regardless of the input size, it is called a constant time operation. If it always uses the same amount of memory regardless of the input size, it is called a constant space operation. The classic example of constant time complexity is a race. Accessing an element by its index will always take the same amount of time, regardless of the array size. Same goes for hash table lookup. No matter how many elements a hash table has, retrieving an element by its key will always take a constant amount of time. When it comes to constant space complexity, calculating Fibonacci numbers is a great example. To calculate the next Fibonacci number, all you need to keep in the memory is the previous two Fibonacci numbers. Hence, you will always use a constant amount of memory, no matter how big the Fibonacci number that you are trying to calculate. Logarithmic complexity, O log n. This is a complexity type found in efficient algorithms, where the time complexity of a function only grows logarithmically in relation to the input. Let me remind you that log n is the shorthand for log base 10 of n, and the definition of logarithm is log base a of n is equal to x only if a to the power of x is equal to n. Since big O notation is asymptotic, we always use log n regardless of the logarithm's base. The logarithm's base changes nothing but a constant multiplier, hence it's irrelevant to our analysis. If you want to learn more about asymptotic analysis, I will put the Wikipedia link in the video description below. Binary search is a classic example of logarithmic time complexity. Imagine you have a sorted area of integers. When you are searching for a specific value, all you need to do is to get the middle element of the array and compare it to the value that you are looking for. If the middle element is less than the value that you are looking for, you can safely discard the first half of the array and repeat the same process on the second half until you find your value. As a result, you will discard half of the remaining elements on each iteration, which will give you a log base 2 of n time complexity in the worst case scenario, where n is the number of elements in the array. As I said, in big O notation, we do not care about the base of the logarithms. So we denote the time complexity of a binary search as just O log n. Logarithmic space complexity, however, is quite rare to see. I've only seen it once in a real life problem, which was quite an edge case, so there is no need to worry about it. Linear complexity, O n. This is yet another straightforward complexity type. If an algorithm's time space usage only grows linearly with the number of elements in the input, then it has linear time space complexity. A great example of this is Cadence algorithm. When you have an array of integers and you are looking for the subarray with the maximum possible sum, you can apply Cadence algorithm to get the solution in linear time. Cadence algorithm only needs to read each member of the array once, and you can process the entire array in only O n time. On the other hand, it has O1 space complexity since it only needs to create a couple of variables. If you want to learn more about Cadence algorithm, I have a dedicated video on it with a ton of illustrations, and the link to it is in the video description. Polynomial complexity, O n to the power of k. If an algorithm takes n to the power of k time, where k is the constant time, it has polynomial time complexity. Let me remind you that a polynomial takes the form of this, where a, b, g, h are some constants. Remember that big O notation is asymptotic. So if an algorithm takes a times n cubed plus n amount of time, we simply denote it as O n cubed. A decent number of sorting algorithms run off polynomial time, including bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, and more. Also, basic algorithmic operations, like multiplication, division, etc., can be implemented at polynomial time. O n squared polynomial complexity has the special name of quadratic complexity. Likewise, O n cubed is called cubic complexity. For instance, brute force approaches to max min subarray sum problems generally have O n cubed quadratic time complexity. You can see an example of this in my cadence algorithm video. Exponential time complexity, O k to the power of n. This is where things are starting to get serious. 
when the complexity of an algorithm is proportional to a constant k raised to the power of n, you get exponential complexity. Remember that n is the number of elements in the input. With this complex type, when your input array is big enough, the resource consumption will quickly approach infinity. Yet again, due to the asymptotic nature of big O notation, you can ignore the constant k and always denote the exponential complexity as O2 to the power of n. As n gets very big, the value of k will not matter. The classic example of exponential complexity is password cracking. To be able to discover someone's password, you need to try every possible combination of every letter. Say that you have a password of length 5, which means n equals 5, which is made up of only English letters, which means k equals 26. Your time complexity in the worst case scenario would be O k to the power of n, which is 26 to the power of 5, which can be computed in less than a second. Now, if you have a password of length 10, and you use special characters that can be typed using a regular computer keyboard, which is roughly a hundred of them, including digits and letters. Your time complexity would be a hundred to the power of 10. This would take years to compute and try using a single computer, assuming there is some slow hashing involved. This is why you should always use a 10 plus character password with special characters in it, even longer if you want to be safe against organizational attacks. Tip. If you want this video to reach more fellow software engineers like you, give it a thumbs up. Google tends to promote more favorable content to more people, which in turn generates more thumbs up, which then leads to exponential views. Hopefully. Factorial complexity. O and factorial. This is the end game. Factorial complexity means that you are trying to compute all possible permutations of a given input. You might remember that in high school, you are taught how to calculate all possible permutations of a list. Now, that is your factorial time complexity. Brute force solutions to traveling salesman problem is also O n factorial, where you basically calculate all possible paths to your destination and then take the shortest one. Of course, there are much more creative and efficient approaches to solving it, which I will get into in another video, full of illustrations. If you want to see it when it's out, don't forget to sub, so you won't miss it. Alternative big O notation. If you were wondering what the thumbnail of this video was about, Hold on tight. I have compiled an alternative version of the big O notation. I always found things easy to remember when they rhyme, especially with humor. So here's my take on big O notation, which can help you to remember the rankings of big O types. O1 is O yeah, O log n is O nice, O n is O k, okay. O n squared is O oh my, O2 to the power of n is O oh no, O n factorial is O oh my god. O n to the power of n is O she. If you want to have the alternative big O notation as a sticker, so you can stick it to unusual places, you can get it from quanticdev.com slash shop. I will leave the link to it in the video description below. If you really want to confuse the fellow software engineers, you can also get it as a small poster, framed print, hoodie, phone case, mug, blanket, or even a shower curtain. And if you want to join the Quantic Developers Club, you can get a sticker for your computer or even a nice canvas poster for your study corner. Anything you order or gift helps the channel while hopefully bringing you some motivation. If you want to see the full collection, check out the Quantic Dev Shop. Conclusion Big O notation list goes longer than what I covered here. If you want to see the rest of it, check out the Wikipedia link in the description. However, rest assured, it is enough if you are familiar with the ones that are mentioned. The rest gets increasingly rare to see in real-world situations, and they are much less likely to appear in an algorithm interview. As always, you can find a written version of this guide in quanticday.com, along with all the other articles. If you want to see the future algorithm videos like this one, don't forget to sub. I will see you on the next one.